Hi, Mark. Okay, so here we are. Um, I've got your watch. Let's talk about the numbers. Um, uh, for a warning, I felt that the mainspring was really, really, really gluey. Really sticky and gross inside. So I can tell you that's probably a large part of these low numbers. So, that's, you know, whatever. It's very low amplitude. Just about the lowest we're ever going to see. Um, this number minimum should be 100 points higher. Oh, boy. Uh, anything below 120, the watch basically isn't running. So it's seriously out of adjustment. It's barely running. Um, but the signal itself is relatively clean. It's just super wow. It's just super, super, super duper duper wow. Super weak. Getting weaker by the second. I'm amazed it's still running. Boy, that's really low. What this number is, this is the amplitude. This is how far back and forth the balance is turning. That tells us how much power is making it in and out of the mainspring uh, down through the gear train to the pallet fork. And the answer here is not a lot. Um, but again, your mainspring feels like it's filled full of Elmer's glue. Uh, I'm sure it's incredibly dirty. But all that said, the rest of the watch actually cosmetically is good. Uh, the case looks nice. The movement looks bright. It has a ton of wear to the mainspring arbor port. Nice long bracelet. Look at that. Yeah, weird. Somebody hand added some extra links to this from a Stellux, a different ty type of bracelet. They hand extended this. That's really crazy. Somebody did some really crazy work there. These are Stellux links. They used to extend the standard ones. You can see the different thickness. That's standard American Seiko or standard issue Seiko. And now it's Stellux right there. Same thing. Huh. Your mainspring arbor port is worn. Come on, give me some light. If you look right here at this screw head, see that move? Uh, the, the lower port for the mainspring arbor, which is this axle right here, that's worn. But the movement doesn't look bad. Um, your winding bridge is loosened up a good bit. See this line of brassing right there? on this edge. That's the winding weight is flopping around because these ball bearings have loosened up and it's grinding off the surface of the metal here. So we're going to have to do something about that. Um, it's, it's on both sides. So that's going to need to be replaced. Um, that's, but that's, I mean, that happens. Seiko went with ball bearings instead of a, a friction fit like a lot of the Swiss things and well, that's what we get. Um, the watch also has, as you know, it's not turning over the day date at all. As I'm adjusting the time, I can feel it clicking every 25 seconds or so of indicated time, and the date's not turning over at all. So there's probably your plastic intermediary wheel between the, the hour wheel and the date driving wheel. It's probably bad. It probably has a bent tooth, and that's just garbage. Eh, whatever. Um... Uh, that quick set doesn't want to push in either. So it's going to need some love. But your chronograph wheel is good. Your dial is very pretty. And it's the blue. You've got the good blue dial. You've got the the blue-black, not the green-blue uh, dial color. Your indicator ring is slightly faded, but not bad. Good white loom. Nice, nice red hands. This watch will look really nice when it's done. It'll be a good-looking watch when we're done. But it's got to, uh, it's got to be serviced. Which, of course, you knew, but... Yep, got to be serviced, but that's a good watch. It's going to be a challenge to see what's up with everything, but it's straightforward. It needs lower mainspring arbor port repair. It needs to be serviced. The barrel is stuffed full of old grease. Uh, it has, I'm sure, a bad intermediary wheel in the calendar. And it needs all the other stuff, case rebuild with seals, crystal, cleaning, and that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know if you want to leave this bracelet the way it is. You certainly can. Somebody did this a long time ago. Or... My friend Larry uh, at Uncle Seiko is now making a new version of this taper bracelet, brand new product, uh, in solid stainless steel. That would be a huge step up for this watch. So go to UncleSeiko.com and look at his new taper bracelets. He's the only person in the world making them, and they are super cool. That's what I would suggest. Okay. I think it's straightforward. Let me know what questions you've got. Okay, thank you.